Welcome to Law Fips, an unfiltered conversation about law, life, divorce, and everything in between. So today we talk with the most famous divorce attorney in the world. Wow, what a dubious honor. Hi. Laura Wasser, <laughs> okay? She's represented everybody from Kim Kardashian to Johnny Depp to Dr. Dre, you freaking name it. Laura, what are we going to talk about today on the podcast? Oh, Benji, what aren't we going to talk about today? <laughs> I think we'll talk about prenuptial agreements. We'll talk about how to navigate divorce. We'll talk about easier ways of going through the process. We'll talk about my own personal situation mm. and my baby daddy. Maybe and a little my, my personal children. situation. Your person, you have your, you're going to have your coming out on this yeah. show. He's not gay. I don't think. <laughs> I don't know. Is that going to happen on this show too? You never know. <laughs> my friend Ben might think otherwise. Um, yeah, so that's what we talked about today. Okay, so... Laura, you're really good at promoting and marketing, even without trying. We learned that in today's episode. So I want you, to, you're like, I think you're really good at telling people what you want. Okay. So I want you to tell the people, why should they subscribe to Law Flip? Because you guys, you need to gain knowledge. Law Flip mm. will give you knowledge. Knowledge is power and power is peace. So again, it's interesting. It's cool. It's an easy listen. Um, and Benji's a great host. So listen to Law Flip. Subscribe. She did it for me. Also, for any legal questions, call us at 1-833-LAW-FLIP. Let's get into the episode. Law Flip, Law Flip, objection, your honor. Turn, turn the game upside down. Law Flip, Law Flip, objection, your honor. Turn the, turn the game upside down. Welcome to Laura Wasser. Welcome. <laughs> Thank it's you. It's good to have you here. Okay, so I was thinking, we have some things in common. Our fathers are attorneys. Yes. We both went to Leo Law School. Yes. You have Kim Kardashian as a client. I got rejected by Kim Kardashian to be on the show. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. And <laughs> I, then I realized she was on your show. So I have a mutual friend with her that basically rejected me on site. She said, no, Benji, she's not going to be on your show. It's not big enough. That's, that, that's, a, you. Good, you know that's a good best friend. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So tell us about yourself. So I'm a family law lawyer. I've been mm -hmm. practicing for over 25 years. Yeah. And I am a startup founder uh, of a online divorce platform called It's Over Easy. And perhaps first and foremost, and most importantly, I'm a mom. So I have two mm. boys. They are 16 and 11. Uh, and that's me. Mm. She's being modest. So she represents the biggest celebrities in the world, Angelina Jolie, Johnny Depp, Kim Kardashian, Dr. Dre, the list goes on. So you represent these celebrities and they always say in the gossip rags, you know, they eat like this, they shop like us. Do they divorce like us? They do actually. Um, I, I've often said that divorce is the great equalizer because no matter how much fame or power or money you have, you are really feeling the same fears and feelings of failure and feelings of sadness, whether it's who's going to walk the red carpet with me at the Oscars or who's going to go to the company picnic with me. Mm. It's scary. And unfortunately, there is a stigma around divorce in our culture, which I hope I hope we will evolve from, I call it the evolution of dissolution. I'd like for people to kind of approach divorce a little bit differently. Um, again, it's not something anyone aspires to, mm -hmm. but I think knowing what the laws are when you get married and then knowing what divorce looks like will really change the way people think about it. And most importantly, change the way families experience it, particularly kids. Sure. So. What's the pettiest thing you've seen like an A-list celebrity do in the middle of a divorce? Uh, petty. I mean, you know, one thing about A-list celebrities is, and this is something that might make them, their divorces a little bit different. They're very used to being told yes. Mm. They surround themselves with people who say yes. That's they, they pay those people. Those people are making a percentage of what the A-list celebrity earns. And in divorce, we as family law practitioners can't say yes. We have to actually apply the law to their facts. So... I don't think this is petty, but when an A-lister comes in and says, well, of course, I'm going to have full legal custody, or of course, right. I'm going to keep my entire catalog. And we say, well, hold up. That's actually not what's going to happen because <laughs> that's not the law. No matter how beautiful or rich or famous you are, we can't change the law. And, you know, sometimes people say, you know, t they'll turn to their manager or whoever and say, I don't want her. Find me somebody else. And, I'll, and we'll part ways amicably. And then later they'll come back and be like, you're the only person who actually didn't blow sunshine up my ass. Can I come back? That is so interesting. I, until you said that, I didn't think about they're, they're so used to being around yes people 
that, and, and uh, I haven't talked about this publicly in any way, but I actually went through my own divorce and now thinking about in the context of a celebrity coming in there and having to be told like all these different things of how they're going to have to operate. That is wild. Okay. So how are you doing by the way? <laughs> how am I doing? <laughs> you know, it's challenging. Yeah. It's challenging. Yeah. Um, anybody who tells you it's not, uh, is lying. Is lying and will, and will experience the challenges at some point. I see a lot of people that yeah. like go through conscious uncoupling and it was really easy and whatever. And then yeah. what happens is it hits you later on. My website's called It's Over Easy. Uh -huh. And I'm constantly saying like, I know it's not easy. It's yeah. not easy to get divorced. And I'm not trying to make it easy to be like, sure. to dip out of your marriage but there should be parts of it that are easier for normal mortals to accomplish without necessarily paying a ton of money to lawyers because we are going through so much of the emotional shit as we're you know, ha having this uncoupling with kids, explaining it to yeah. them, figuring out how to kind of live on our own again, date on our own again, divide up our possessions, you know, the, the wedding photo album, that's so hard that the process, the legal part of it um, shouldn't have to be. Yeah. And I think it's over easy is a great service. And I want to talk to you more about that. But you mentioned conscious uncoupling. So obviously, we all aspire to have Gwyneth Paltrow, Chris Martin type, you know, unconscious unco uncoupling. But in your experience with these A-listers, how often is that the case? I think it's often. I think we've gotten to a point because of, again, celebrities, it trickles down. So because of the famous people who have done it and spoken about it and given a good example, we now all kind of want to emulate them. And yeah. so I do see, you know, in the last 10 years, people wanting to do that. They want to go to co-parenting counselors yeah. as opposed to going into court to fight their custody mm -hmm. situations. They want to get to a place where, you know, I always recommend therapy for couples and they say, well, we're not getting back together. We don't want to reconcile. I say, no, no, this is therapy so that you have tools so that you can speak with each other about some of this uncoupling. The Talking hard part about, about that is like, making sure I think that the objectives are the objectives Correct. are the same because one person may say, like, I don't want to go because I think the other person is trying to go to get back with right. me. And I think trying to figure out how to align but that's, on that's the counselor's job. And I yeah. know some that are very good at saying like, wait, we're not talking about the past. We're not talking about how to do things differently in your marriage. We're talking about how to continue co-parenting and coexisting as a family, even though this family is not living under the same roof. Should people put preconditions on going to therapy for divorce? Like if, if, you're, uh, if you're in the middle of a divorce, uh, do you advise either of the people in the process to say, I'm only going to go if this happens. I have to have healthy boundaries around it? Or do you think that's one place where you just, just succumb to the process and say, let's go to the therapy? I think it's more up to the therapist to say, if you're going to sit in this office or on the Zoom call with me, as the case may be, um, I I'm going to give these parameters. I think if one person says to the therapist, I want to do this, but I really don't want to talk about getting back together or all the horrible things that I did during the marriage, that's the therapist should say, I'll do this, but only if, you know, sure. and, and there are certain therapists that are really good about doing that. There's, like I said, co-parenting therapists. They're not going to talk about the problems that you had in your marriage. Right. They're going to talk about disciplinary and screen time and whatever else. So both parents are on the same page and make it easier for kids to kind of go back and forth between households. That makes sense. Okay. So you obviously represent celebrities, you in your own right. Uh, I, I talked about this on a prior episode, like the marriage story, that was one of the most brutal, but amazing movies about divorce. I remember watching it before I got divorced and thinking like, Jesus, this is, and it's so realistic. It's all, you know, whenever you watch something and you're like, oh, that's about my profession, but they get it all wrong. That story was in, I think in large part based on your, you and the, maybe you won't acknowledge that, but I think Laura Dern, the one who uh, plays Scarlett Johansson's attorney, is said to be based off you. But yes, that, that has it's, been said. <laughs> whether it's true or not, you have the fame or notoriety, whatever it is that would at least allow for that rumor to take place. How do you yourself deal with like, do you like the fame? Do you like, what, what do you like about it? 
What do you hate about uh, it? I, I don't really experience the fame. I like being respected in my field, but yeah. I think for, in the, for the most part, I mean, until we launched the website, I never even did any press because I was anything about being a lawyer. I, I, I'm very, very protective of my clients and their yeah. privacy because I do realize that this is probably one of the hardest things that a person goes through in their life. It I mean, is. besides sickness or death of a family yeah. member or loved one to kind of capitalize that and be like, hey, look at me, I'm representing right, them during right, this right. shitty time. I, I don't, it's unseemly and I don't particularly so like it. So how did it. you get the Disso Queen? How did you get this? How well, did this happen? for better or for worse, in the state of California, divorces are public filing. So as you may not know who is, you know, Joe Famous's entertainment attorney who negotiated his deal in this movie, because that's not published anywhere. Sure. But when I file a divorce petition for somebody, my name's on it. So the and just first to be thing, clear, on those on the public filing or the nature of the publicity of it, there's almost no case or it's very difficult to seal it, correct? It's almost impossible to seal yeah. it. And there have been many, we've tried all kinds of things to do just the party's initials or whatever. it's public for whatever reason, um, you know, the courts have found that the balance of sealing versus having it public is more important to have it public. Frankly, I disagree. I've actually been on panels with Harvey Levin from TMZ about sure. this duking it out with him because I just, I, I don't get it. I don't yeah. understand why that's important for the public to know. Yeah, uh, Levin says, oh, well, it keeps judges honest. I have faith in our judges that they're going to yeah. be honest, whether they're representing a, a, a hearing a case of a famous person or not. Um, look, it's great fodder. What I've tried to kind of turn it into is if it is going to be public, it's, you know, having some kind of a lesson for people. Most of our cases, we try to keep private. We try to mediate them. It is something that I will say to a famous person or the representatives. And, you know, every trick in the book, we don't actually file the case at all until it's already finally, you know, completely resolved. Or we file it on a weekend before a holiday, right, you know, right, right. bury it somehow. You know, I've worked with a lot of publicists trying to just kind of make it low key because again, I don't think most famous people are interested in being famous or having a news cycle surrounding what is a very difficult time. So, sure. uh, you know, for me, if there's any kind of media attention, it is directed at either the website or kind of teaching young people. I, ha I do a lot of public speaking. I have had young attorneys, you know, come up and say, God, I'm so happy that you, you know, that you're public. I, I, you were the person that made it okay for me to wear stiletto heels in court. Or you, now that I saw that you have a tattoo, I know it's okay for me. If, that, if I'm helping in that way, great. Um, otherwise I, you know, I've had, I've, like I said, I've had words with a few paparazzi if I've been with my kids or somewhere, but for the most part, luckily for me, they don't care unless yeah. I'm walking with a famous person. And I, usually those famous people don't want to okay. be walking with their divorce lawyer. So it's a non-issue. <laughs> You're in the business of divorce. Yes. You vowed to never marry again, which is very on brand, sort of. You're getting people out of their divorces. Why have you vowed to never marry again? I have not vowed to never marry again. Oh, I mean, okay. I look, Mr. never say never. I was married very briefly in 1993. We parted ways amicably with nothing but debt to divide <laughs> um, and our dog. And I, that wedding was so beautiful at the Bella Hotel with over 250 people and 10 bridesmaids and 10 groomsmen and a gorgeous two dresses, the, the long one and the short one. And I kind of felt like it wasn't ever necessary for me to have a redo of that. That yeah. was the best wedding I could have imagined. It was that special princess day. And, and that didn't carry you through through marriage. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> we look, we were just too young. We were yeah. 25 and that yeah. was probably, we hadn't really become who we were going to be yet. I, I still know him. I'm still really good friends with his younger brother. Um, but no, and then I went on to have other very monogamous, significant relationships, had kids in two of those relationships, have very good familial relationships with the fathers of my children, but a marriage. I, What's the key? Know. What's the key to keeping the relationships with the father's children? And I think there's it's, two of them. Yeah. So that's, that's yeah, hard. Two. There's a lot of juggling. Um, I think the key really is respect. I, I think, first of all, you have to love your kid more than you dislike your ex. That's mm -hmm. a huge one. And the second is you really have to have respect. This is someone, and I say this to clients all the time, you had sex with this person probably more than once. You were in the delivery room with this person, either pushing out or getting cut open or holding a hand and being screamed at. Um, this is the 
parent of your child. You got to figure out a way to get along with them. And it's not just until they turn 18. Both of my parents who split up when I was a teenager were with me in the delivery room or after, you know, both of my kids, they were, they walked me down the aisle when I did get married long after they were divorced. Your quality of life is so much better if you're able to get along with your ex, because then both of you get to go to the birthday parties. I think I was telling you earlier, the father of my older child just got engaged. I love her. She's amazing. Like we have family dinners. Um, the new, the new the bride, new, to, the the new new bride to, be. to be. Yes, yeah. I mean we're she's mishpucha, as they say in the <laughs> As they say in our own country. <laughs> so I, I, look, it's so much easier to love and to like and to laugh than it is to hate. I also say often, especially in LA, you'll be able to relate to this. If you're constantly like scrunching your face up and angry and judgy and whatever, that you're going to have to get so much more Botox. It's just not <laughs> worth it. And you're also not going to be open to finding somebody new for yeah. yourself, I feel like. Other than getting th into the marriage in the first place, what is the biggest mistake people make in divorce? I think one of the biggest mistakes is lack of educating yourself. One, as you're getting into the marriage, figure out what the law is. I mean, I have so many people that come to me and they're like, I don't want to get a prenup. It's too unromantic. I'm not really sure more about prenups later. But if you think about it, when you, you're planning a wedding, you're, you've got the caterer and you've got the venue and you've got the florist and the band, all of these people necessitate contracts, right? But you're entering into the biggest contract and most people don't even know what the law is in their state. So for me, and, and look, if you did it, coulda, shoulda, woulda, now you're married. But before you get divorced, find out what the law is, find out what you're entitled to, what you're going to have to pay. I have dads call and go, so I have two little kids. I guess I'm only going to see them on the weekends and on Wednesdays. And I'm like, dude, we're not in the seventies. Of course you're going to see them more than that. <laughs> or like women come in and say, well, I'm the, I'm the stay home mom. I get the house. Right. And I'm like, I, I don't know what was the house purchased with? How does this work? Figure, do a little self-education. Obviously a lawyer can educate you, but they're going to, you know, ask for payment to do that. Sure. Go online. Even if you go on, it's over easy, but there's tons of websites in every state that will tell you what the law is. And I'd say, I'm not saying divorce plan, but have your ducks in a row so yeah. that your expectations, whether it's fear of the unknown or a certain, you know, arrogance to what you're going to be able to do and what you're going to be able to have, you come into it realistically speaking, because I feel like one of the biggest problems or mistakes are delusions of grandeur. Should everyone get a prenup? Not necessarily, no. Okay, once you figure out what the law is in your state, so in the state, okay, if you get married in California, everything that you earn, anything that you create, you write a screenplay, you write a song, you make a painting, if you do that during your marriage, it's community property. So it's owned 50% by the other person. Um, if you make more than the other person, you're going to pay the other person's spousal support commensurate with your lifestyle during the marriage, probably for half the length of the marriage if it's 10 years or less. And if you have kids, you're going to be kicking in for the kids' support. Those are the basic laws in family law in California. If you're cool with those laws, if you say, I, when neither one of us have very much and we want to have a partnership and everything we do, we want to put in together and we're cool with it being community property. If you have a ton of money that you're going to inherit from your family, I have a ton of people that call trust funders, or whatever, that's separate property. You may not need to have a prenup to protect that. That's going to be separate. Know the laws, see if they apply to you. While I don't think everybody needs a prenup, I think everybody should be having the conversations that would go into having a prenup because everybody's so concerned about the dress and the flowers on that special day and where are we going on the honeymoon and how are we registering? Let's talk about the fact that this is a partnership and beyond just the law. My parents are older. When they get to a point where they can't live by themselves, I don't know that I want to put them in assisted living. Can they come live with us? Mm. How much are we putting away for retirement? Hey, kids, do you think they should be going to private or public or parochial school? People don't have those kind of conversations, which I think is fascinating, but I get it because I didn't when I got married at 25. And to whirlwind romances, Hollywood, everything's so amazing. Everybody's in their own reality show. Sometimes you forget to ask some of the important questions or have some of the important conversations. Again, this wouldn't go in a prenup. 
talk about some of the stuff that may be uncomfortable down the line because going in with realistic expectations, and by the way, even a few therapy sessions with somebody who can help you have the tools when things are good, when you're super in love, the sex is still rad, do it (laughs) then, go home and have sex. And then maybe when things aren't always so rosy and they won't be in any relationship, there's going to be bad times. Then you're equipped with the ability to have those kind of conversations. That's very helpful. Okay. So as the practice of law and just juggling your career, you're a single mom, you are a CEO of an app uh, that you'll talk about. You are one of the name partners that you're a firm you have with your father and you know, I thought at this point you'd basically just be bringing the business the way when we were talking, I mean, you're in the cases, how the, hell do you juggle all of it? What do you, what do you like? What do you hate about the practice of law? Give us a little insight into your balancing act of all these things. I juggle it cause I work hard and I play hard. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I feel like I, you know, I can rest when I'm dead. I probably <laughs> will not be doing this like as long as my dad is. He's going to be 79 this August. You will not see me kicking around the Los Angeles Superior Courthouse <laughs> when I'm that age. I have no desire to, but I, I like the problem solving aspect yeah. of family law. And so, you know, creating the website did that. Writing the book did that. Speaking to people about it does that. And then actually getting my hands dirty and getting into the cases. When I meet with a new client, almost immediately I see how it's probably going to end up. And I see what the variables are. And one of the big variables is how long it's going to take and how much it's going to cost. The other stuff kind of falls into place. So if we can get into some kind of a mediation situation, we can get into settlement discussions, providing all of the information right up front and then getting it done. I love that. And if you have somebody super unreasonable on the other side, by the same token, I love going to court and winning and having a judge go, your position sounds really reasonable, Ms. Wasser. What's wrong with you, dude? (laughs) I mean, so uh, I like getting clarity. One of the things I hate is how long things seem to be taking these days, not just as a result of COVID. It was already a problem. Our system is so broken. And so... That kills me. I just, it shouldn't take this long to get results. It shouldn't be this difficult to find good judicial officers. You shouldn't have attorneys that are kind of making money from chaos. They should be also of the same mindset. That's the stuff I don't like. You and I talked about this. We probably like, you know, jokingly said, like we probably couldn't afford ourselves, our own hourly fee. And you can only imagine what your everyday person deals with when they're going through this or how many people don't get divorced because they can't afford it. And, and all that comes with that. Uh, tell us how your project, your app, helps alleviate that problem. It's not expensive. Yeah. I mean, you know, I did, I, I wrote a book in 2013 called It Doesn't Have to Be That Way. And it was really because I had so many friends that were going through divorce or contemplating divorce that would come to me and go, I could never afford you. And I say, I could never afford me. So I understand. (laughs) And then really looking at, I do a lot of also pro bono work with organizations. It, the, the fear and sadness and, and, and panic incident to, you know, going through a divorce paired with not having a lot of money. Um, and by the way, even the rich people don't like spending money on divorce. Who does? It's like spending money to get your entire, even especially lawyers, especially lawyers. I mean, (laughs) because when we put in our retainer agreement, like a lot of what you're getting billed for, you don't always see, we're talking about your case. We're thinking about your case. Like I run every morning. I'm thinking on my whole run about one case. I don't bill for that, Right. but how it alleviates it is we provide a lot, you know, that saying like, you know, uh, give a man bread and he'll whatever, but church a man to fish or something like that. We give them the information, we equip them with the laws and help them apply it to their facts so that they can then see what the result would be. Yeah. And then they can figure it out on their own and it's like less than two hours of my time. Yeah. So that's amazing. It's an amazing resource. Obviously there is always gonna be complex litigation that needs family law attorneys and experts to help either resolve it or go into court and litigate it. But for the most part, the average garden variety divorce can be done with a little bit of help and our artificial intelligence online and filling out forms. So that's what we've tried to bring to people and people are reacting well. Also the website has, in addition to providing and helping you fill out the forms, it has these great resources for people to read about other people's experiences, read about here's the 
mental health component for your kids. And here's what you should be doing in terms of getting health insurance if it's no longer available through your spouse's employer. That's amazing. We have an index with resources in every state for the best dating apps and the best, you Mm. know, insurance apps and people to help with finances and people to help with childcare. So it's kind of one-stop shopping when you're going through it, which is a very lonely process. That's for sure. That's for sure. That's amazing. Okay, we're moving on to legal tip of the month. This is the legal tip of the month brought to you by the power hitters at Benowitz Law Corporation. Did you know that you could use up to half your sick pay in California to care for a family member, a parent, spouse, or child who is sick or who needs to visit the doctor, and that your employer can't retaliate against you? So if you need to care for a loved one, be sure to use your sick pay and don't be afraid to do it. Okay, this is brought to you by Smith Law. We do employment, personal injury, and class action. So sometimes employees come to us and they say, Benji, what if my employer lies about the reason for my termination? And Laura, could you imagine somebody lying in the middle of litigation? <laughs> no. That would never happen. So my answer is always not what if your employer lies, but how they're going to lie. They're usually going to say, you know, you were delinquent, you, your job performance was terrible, you... Uh, this was a business reason. It's our job to take those pretexts and disprove them. That's our job. So you come to us. Don't worry about how your employer is going to lie. We'll take care of that. Call us anytime. You can call us at 1-833-LAWFLIP. 1-833-LAWFLIP. So everyone, please make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't already. YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. Laura. Tell us where people could find you and any parting words you have for the Law Flip audience. So you can find me at It's Over Easy. I'm at, we're on Instagram. It's also itsovereasy.com. Also, Laura Wasser official is my own Instagram. If you want to see pictures of my dogs or my kids. Or I do. What old women look like as they age Hopefully gracefully. gracefully, exactly. And parting tips, you know what they are, especially right now, kind of post-COVID, getting back into the world. Be nice. Ooh, I love Divorce or otherwise, just be nice. It's oh. easier to be nice. It's nice to I be nice. I thought you were nice. going to be scary. Yeah, no, look at so you. nice, So right? nice. <laughs> it's a facade. No, yeah. really, be kind. It just, it really, it feels good. And particularly if you're in a conflict with somebody, it can really obviate the need for more, more shittiness. How's that? I love it. Okay. We will see you next month, Law Flip. Law Flip, Law Flip, objection, your honor. Turn, turn the game upside down. Law flip, law flip, objection, your honor. Turn the, turn the game upside down. Connect with us on Instagram. We're at Law Flip. Law Flip is produced by Blue Crescent Media. You can learn more about BCM at bluecrescentmedia.com. Our intro music is provided by Pen Practice, and our Law Flip identity was created by Garrett Whiston and Travis Nagel. And lastly, this podcast is made available by Smith & Benowitz for educational and entertainment purposes only. By listening to this podcast, you understand that no attorney-client relationship is being formed between you and Smith & Benowitz or any of its attorneys. This podcast should not be used as a substitute for competent legal advice from a licensed professional attorney in your state. To the extent this podcast may be considered an advertisement, Benjamin Smith is the attorney responsible for this advertisement. Thank you.